That is extremely simple model. Somewhat exaggerated model. For example, let's demonstrate Famous my oscillator. Amplitude is decaying very slowly, right? Do you, did you bring water? Okay. I will make another damping. You see, right? It decay very rapidly, right? I didn't do anything using this hand. interesting problem you can think. What if the natural frequency is very high? The damping force acting on that body will be different to the damping force acting on the body when the body oscillating at a lower frequency. You see? Suppose you are sitting on that mass. Suppose you dream that you, you squeeze your body, right? I think small and small, and then you are sitting on that body. Now you are sitting on, over here. Exciting, right? And then you see the fluid. Suppose you are seeing the fluid. When omega is very high, what you see is the fluid is coming very fast and it departs from me very fast, okay? So what, this way, right? Well, when the frequency is very low, the, free, free, the fluid is come to me and squeeze me and then come out. The fluid oxalate you very fast, what you feel is the uh, mass effect of a fluid. Right? But when you see the fluid in very low frequency, you see the compressibility of a fluid. So depending on frequency, the damping effect is very different. Which means that it's not linear because it depends on frequency. And usually, in that case, the damping force, usually say, damping force is proportional to x squared. When viscous damping is dominant. And this is non-linear. Okay. Then the equation of motion look like
And I want to solve it. And you can solve it. Using MATLAB. Integration. Direct integration. Okay. So you have to go to MATLAB to do it. But do you think that we can have a transfer function? I mean, do you think that we have a magnitude and phase relation? Okay. Having magnitude and phase relation means that if I have, if I excite omega, the, 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 the system with this frequency, the magnitude will amplify this amount. Okay? This express the ratio. Okay? Ratio. And what if I increase the uh, input force F0 twice? Then this graph shows me the response will be twice bigger than the response we had before. What if, if I increase the magnitude of excitation ten times? Then the magnitude of response would be ten times. Okay? Okay, see this equation then. What if I had excitation ten times then can I say the response would be the ten times of the response that I have when I have F0? No, because this is not linear. This is a square. Square means I, if I increase it 10 times, the square means I, it should be increased 100 times. So, linear, linearity does not hold. In other words, principle of superposition does not hold for the nonlinear system. So, at the end of Chapter 2, there's a, some summary that says the typical behavior of a nonlinear system, and I, I suggest you to read it, and you may not understand it completely. That's why we have a graduate course. Okay. okay. If you come to graduate course, you will, you will find, you will learn more about the nonlinear system. Actually, life is nonlinear. Life is nonlinear. Then you may ask me why we we are learning linear system. Linear system is useless, right? But we can certainly look at, understand the major behavior of a physical system by using linear system. So. We need to find equivalent damping. Okay. Okay. This look like the damping force in this case look like look like this. Okay. But I said if the if the if the this if the velocity is small then I can approximate like this. That is a C E Q. Okay? How can I find the equivalent damping? There are many ways. But very common way is following. Okay. The energy dissipated during one cycle because of damping would be F D Yes. Right? And for linear damping case, this is a CX dot. DX. 